Okay, so we are starting session two. Um, the first, the first uh, paper um, is by Immanuel Koh, um, and it's entitled Associative Synthesis with Deep Neutral Networks for Architectural Design. Hi guys, um, thanks for coming. Um, so, so yes, my name is Emmanuel Alco. So I'm I'm based in Singapore, um, where I teach and do my research at the Singapore University of Technology and Design. Um, I'm in the uh, Department of Architecture and also the new program, uh, Design AI uh, program. So, so um, what do I mean by associative synthesis? Um, as you can read from the title. Well, we, we could actually look at this term f um, quite generally from two perspectives, um, each drawing from different domains. So for instance, on the left, uh, one could think of uh, the by association by um, uh, Koestler um, in his book, The Act of Creation. Or even the, the surrealist, uh, René Marguerite, uh, in this uh, cinema, uh, in PIP, <clears throat> there, there are this idea of subjectivity, um, so kind of a contrast, right, with what we are used to when we talk about associative modeling. So on the left, you have the subjective versus the objective, the qualitative the versus the quantitative, the conceptual, which is something that uh, uh, Kloester talked about, uh, where different uh, frames of reference, when they intersect, there is this Associative, associative context um, versus the geometric, the semantic versus the synthetic, the subconscious, uh, which is where the psychoanalytical part of it comes in, versus the conscious, um, and then the implicit versus explicit, and uh, the paradoxical even, um, at least in the case of uh, the, the, the painting of the pipe, the treachery of images, and the logical. So the, the intention of the paper here then is, is uh, to combine these two um, strands of understanding uh, and, and observe how they may interplay in terms of how, uh, in terms of their associative affordance uh, for design. So on the, on the one hand, you have the human part and the, the deep learning part. Um, and so the research question uh, is uh, how might deep learning models be appropriated for architectural co-creation through an associative design synthesis process? So the, the objective here, uh, in, in the presentation, you will see a series of uh, design research projects that leverages uh, the imagery impressions synthesized by deep generative uh, neural networks. Um, and also the formal interpretation uh, by human to then translate these, translate these uh, imagery into uh, uh, architectural artifacts. And so this paper explored this associative interplay. Um, and the paper served to provide this, or rather proposes this framework. Um, to then uh, take advantage of the different capacity uh, in, in learning, perceiving, synthesizing, as afforded by both uh, humans and machine, and, and in a way kind of distribute the labor within the design process, um, which you will see in a bit. So um, I will show three different projects um, kind of framed by such a format, the brief, speculation, concept, data, model, and synthesis. And, and each of the three of them um, sort of illustrates the varying degrees of uh, associative affordance for co-creation. So um, these are uh, the, the projects that I will uh, elaborate. Um, so this association between the sculptures and landscape through the data set of Henry Moore's sculptures, uh, between fictions and, and facts uh, in the anime film, uh, Studio Ghibli's film, using the film as uh, a source of data for the training of the neural networks. And past and future, uh, particularly in this case, look at the Serpentine Pavilion uh, of 2020, which 
we all know uh, didn't exist uh, because of the uh, because of the pandemic. So here um, I'll go through each of them uh, one at a time. So for the first one, uh, which is the uh, on the sculptures and landscape, uh, is to look at the former <laughs> characteristics of sculptures and see how that may be appropriated for landscape architecture, and using segmentation models. Uh, to create the design data sets, and also using conditional uh, general adversarial networks for generating uh, the design. So the, actually I moved too fast. Um, um, and so you will see in a bit in project two, uh, the models are uh, different. Um, so uh, in this case, the second one will be looking at the de design generation, generation with unconditional general adversarial network. Um, and also captioning, image captioning models to sort of serve as a uh, way to interpret these images in a non-human way. And then in the third project, uh, we'll look at the, um, how to somehow predict uh, future serpentine <coughs> pavilions based on the 20 years of uh, previous uh, design. And then with an added part where uh, a classification model is being used, to classify the newly, newly generated uh, design uh, according to their uh, fidelity to the previous designs and also uh, other models for interpretation. So let's move uh, more quickly to the first one. Um, the design research project number one. Um, so again, as I mentioned, uh, the format follows uh, with a brief, a kind of a pseudo brief. Um, so a sculpture part for Henry Moore. The, the speculation is that perhaps we may learn or inherit or rather appropriate some of the formal characteristics of sculptures as a kind of 2.5D relief. And then the concept is really looking at how the, uh, this association between the intricacy of the surface articulation of, at the scale of a sculpture and that of a landscape, which seemingly are different uh, uh, kind of frames, frames of reference as uh, what Goethe uh, would say. And so a kind of a quick, so on the left, uh, on the left you could see, well, on, on your left, yeah, some of the generated uh, sculptures trained using the Henry Moore, um, data set from the Henry, Henry Moore Foundation. On the right is really the, the model looking at the latent space that the, the uh, neural networks has learned. So the, in this case, an unconditional general adversarial network. But, um, and in terms of the data, so as I mentioned, thousand of photographic images, um, and using the uh, deep encoder decoder network called the uh, BaseNet to, to kind of prepare the annotation. So you have the image of the sculpture and then it, it does kind of a background remover so that it facilitates the learning. And also, um, uh, of course, at times there were some failed cases, so he need to kind of really manually clean it up with Photoshop, but those are really a very small per percentage of it. So the data set that we have for this project then is the RGB of photographic images um, um, with the white background, meaning background removed with the base net, and the black outline, which so I will show you in a bit the, some images uh, so that it's clearer. So this is the kind of uh, pad data set uh, using a um, conditional image to image model translation uh, called pix to pix um, very po popular deep neural networks model to kind of translate from the what you see from the first column to the second to the third column the second column is um, we have the ground truth the the actual thing that the model is supposed to predict uh, we can see that it Generally, the prediction is, is uh, quite, um, not say accurate, but convincing. <laughs> but if you look closely, um, certain parts of the arms are kind of removed, but although the silhouette is the same, uh, both silhouettes are the same, and the, the texture may be different, the material may be different, but still the three-dimensionality of it uh, maintained uh, quite well. Um, such as the mother and child motif, we could still see it from uh, some of these synthetic Henry Moore uh, generated uh, sculptures. So in, in this case, the synthesis part would be perhaps that sort of three-dimensional uh, form could be then applied 
in a, a kind of a pseudo site condition. So here we have four different sites uh, chosen just to demonstrate how by giving the, the uh, model a silhouette, like the one in the middle column, we could then generate a 2.5D alpha channel of the, the forms, which could then be then uh, translated um, very simply into different uh, geometrical translation, if you like, um, by slicing it, voxelizing it, and then also uh, subsequently 3D print them uh, to really see uh, how it might be uh, um, um, useful, uh, or, or rather the three-dimensional aspect of it. But just to kind of show a video of the process, which uh, also shows the uh, training, uh, so first, you get the images from the Henry Moore Foundation uh, with a web scraper. Uh, and then you do the base net to remove uh, two versions of the base net to remove the background. And then you have a set of images to then train the model. Uh, so meaning, given one, return me the other. And this is the training process. As you see, the epochs, uh, kind of epoch number two is already arriving quite uh, a good results. And then uh, providing that here, applying in the kind of a site condition, and then uh, tr somehow tr try to three-dimensionalize it uh, with whatever geometric algorithms, um, um, quick visualization. Um, so move on to the next one, uh, which is the idea of uh, using the fictional architecture of uh, produced by Studio Ghibli's, uh, Ghibli's in his uh, anime movies like the Howling Castle and all that. Those who are a fan of anime, um, of uh, Studio Ghibli's would, would be familiar. Um, so this is the kind of work that uh, is being produced by uh, the uh, studio, and so then the studio studio brief to kind of look at such a possible framework is, um, so the, the question is then, could the, the, can we learn from fictional architecture of uh, anime with existing architecture of reality? So then the association here is the, uh, the fictional architecture expression uh, of anime uh, being somehow as a source for or inspiration um, for more conventional uh, buildings. So in this case, the data set uh, consisted of um, um, the, the films, right? You grab uh, steel frames that, that shows uh, architecture uh, buildings, which there are many. Uh, in fact, uh, the, the images, the 2,000 or so images were taken from 17 films um, by, I'm just showing a few of them at the bottom. Um, and because the, again, because there's a convolutional neural network, is always a square, and therefore the, it was then kind of cropped and trimmed off into a 1375 by 1375 at the highest resolution. Um, but of course, you then further get reduced to uh, um, two to the power of n, right, which is the kind of preferred uh, sizing for deep neural networks training. So in this case, um, initially a vanilla GAN was uh, used uh, with the uh, um, um, DC GAN. Um, but subsequently, uh, style game was used because it's more performative uh, using the pre-trained uh, model uh, and using the low-level features to, to learn from the new data set. So there are, for, for the sake of experimentation, to see the biasness uh, of these pre-trained models is to use one that was previously pre-trained with um, 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 church buildings, the other one with cars. And you will see uh, quite quickly that uh, these underlying um, bias, biasness, in fact, appear in the images that are being generated. So, um, um, right, let's move on. Uh, in, so, in, in that sense, it, this idea of design by analogy, uh, by, associ uh, um, by associative uh, creative perspective, uh, is kind of being brought into the form exploration. So here we see outputs of a model that was trained, um, kind of transferred learning uh, using a pre-trained style GAN 2 uh, that was pre-trained with church buildings. We see these uh, images, they look very familiar in the exact same style of the uh, work from Studio Ghibli's, uh, simply because he, ha he, ha he has so many <laughs> films and they are all quite similar. It's, it's really perfect to do these sort of experiments. Um, and, and on 
in this case, we see um, sometimes um, car-like features. Uh, th these ones may not be that obvious. I'll show you in the next slide. Uh, you begin to see strange uh, car-like structures uh, um, closer to the, the uh, Howling uh, Castle. So here we see that these are the kind of strange, uh, or rather uncanny images being generated from the model that has been uh, exposed to, to um, uh, uh, automobiles uh, data set previously. And the, in the synthesis part is to then bring in uh, another model, the image captioning model um, from 2017. So in this case, you've got a, a StyleGAN model then then generate an image that looks like is training set, but not the same. And then you plug this image into an image captioning model that translate the image into a caption. Uh, and then what we have then is is the sort sort of interpretation of the uh, of the output uh, from a model uh, um, by a model, and meaning non-human. And then the the other part of exercise actually is to ask a human subject to then begin to write his own or her own interpretation of that image. And, and there are quite interesting uh, uh, um, moments where the, the contrast is uh, uh, very obvious. So again, to show uh, some examples of the, so on the, on the right side uh, is the, on the left side, in your, yeah, on your left side is the one trained with church building. So the, and on the right side um, with the uh, automobile. Actually, it's the other way around. The, the one on the right seems not moving because that the, um, so this, these are showing um, the exploring that latent space that has been learned by the model based on the images. Um, yeah, so the speed is actually based on how fast they move in that high dimensional space uh, during the interpolation. We see features of uh, human-like objects uh, at the bottom, but again, building light as well. Yeah, I think the right one is almost going to stop. Uh, but anyway, so uh, move on to the other project, which is uh, looking at how one might learn from uh, a limited number of buildings, or uh, in this case, uh, 20 different buildings from 2000 to 2019, uh, the Serpentine Pavilion. This is also kind of a convenient uh, example because the, 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 the projects, uh, this, this, this one uh, will be quite familiar from Fujimoto. Um, um, it's quite convenient because you have the 20 different buildings, but you have the different representation of them in, you know, people take images, right? So. In fact, every single project could be represented with thousands and thousands of images uh, to learn from. Uh, yet, they have the same kind of context, right? It's the same size, same, even the same cost, um, and same budget, right? Same budget, same duration of, of um, the, the uh, building being a temporary pavilion. So here, the brief then is to build that unbuilt seven time pavilion of uh, 2020 can we actually do that? Can we learn from the former progression of previous buildings? Um, so here is to, um, so here for instance, the data set consists of about 5,000 or so images representing the 20 past uh, pavilions. Um, and so at the bottom from 2000 onwards, the Zaha and all the way to the more recent one. Uh, so, and also 20 classes, right? So the first cut, there are a few stages to this particular project. So the first cut is a bit similar as the the the, the uh, Studio Ghibli's project, uh, which is using a style gun tool pre-trained with uh, with church buildings, and then do a transfer learning using our own data set. And then these are the generated uh, so-called fake version of the different pavilions. But then the uh, the other part of this project is then. Um, is to use a classifier, right? So are we able to say, um, you have trained this first AI model, it generates a pavilion that looks like, that looks a bit similar to one or few or many of those in the training site, meaning that 20 buildings. And then we plug 
um, an, another model, which is a classification model, to tell you exactly to 50% uh, of it looks like Zaha, 20% of it looks like Gary's uh, pavilion. Um, and then, so you will see in a bit uh, this kind of a convoluted way of thinking about plugging different neural networks to perform uh, at times uh, uh, reflection about the synthesized images. So here, the, a similar thing uh, as you saw just now uh, with the Henry Moore uh, um, and the Studio Ghibli's project, the anime project, uh, the, again in the latent space. So here we see that the biasness appeared quite quickly because it was using the same pre-trained model uh, with uh, church buildings. We see that peach roof quite uh, quite obvious, but oftentimes you see like the, this red color quite John Novell kind of, uh, and sometimes you see Zumtor also with these uh, black walls and so that, that um, yeah, in fact, during the, 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 the training, uh, was deliberately, have deliberately removed quite a number of the so, so Fujimoto building because it's creating this biasness in the entire data set because we just have more. Um, and just to ensure that uh, each of the diff 20 different pavilions uh, has been well represented. You know, move on quickly. Um, so here, uh, the question then is, what are the criteria for selecting an output that should bear potential for architecture tr translation? I mean, there are so many. So uh, apparently, uh, a few kind of uh, visually uh, identifiable uh, features would be, uh, it would be a well-formed design is one that is, should be architectonically readable, and, and it should be novel. It should not simply copy uh, from the training set, meaning you could see the exact design of, of the uh, one of the 20, uh, uh, 20 pavilions. And it should not be locally re repetitive, meaning patterns being kind of pasted all over. Uh, that should be a difference in the silhouette, at least. So here uh, is what I'm saying, that given uh, the synthesized image on the right, on the left, right, uh, those with the numbers, um, I have a class classification I want to tell us uh, how, what's the percentage distribution for different uh, different uh, inputs, uh, sorry, different um, outputs images, right? So we could see that sometimes a good balance, balance uh, at least based on how the experiment has been framed, a good balance would be uh, three, two to three or four different um, classes that dominate the uh, classification of a single output uh, image. And this is kind of a more uh, Excel uh, um, view of it. And lastly, it would be then, uh, plugging another model um, that allow us to investigate which are the uh, neurons that have been activated during the process of classification. And also the, um, so this is the kind of the last part of the third, what is in the third model, um, which is the investigate neural network. Um, so you see that certain parts been kind of identified by the, by the model uh, as, as important features. Um, Okay, I, I think I'm running short of time. Um, so I will move on. The next slide shows kind of a way to somehow translate this, right? So in the case of the Serpentine Pavilion, it's interesting because we do have the construction drawings of the previous 20 different pavilions. And if we could say, given an image that generated by the first AI model, tell me uh, what's the distribution of their similarities to the previous 20 pavilions, we could then look for that top three or two and search for their construction drawings and then use that as a way to kind of align the, the uh, stylistic uh, um, uh, intervention in, in kind of a more consistent uh, or, or coherent way. So in this case, an image in the middle is the output and surrounding it at the top, uh, you have three different styles, meaning three different parts pavilion. And then we can look at the different drawings to see somehow to do this translation uh, um, by the human architect. And the, in this case, the same exact image with the same references could produce very different um, interpretation. The, these are done by two different human subjects. Um, so, so the conclusion then uh, is, to, is that the whole co-creative process is actually quite messy and it's rather necessary to be strategic about the labor distribution. So therefore making full use of the strengths and, and weaknesses of 
the machine, meaning in this case deep neural network, uh, whether is it generative or discriminative, um, and, and the human intuition that brings in the, the kind of uh, background uh, information, the culture, maybe cultural, maybe political, maybe, um, yeah, very personal interpretation, even sometimes, as I say, paradoxical. Um, and yes, yeah, so this is, this is all I have, thanks. <laughs>